Oh, it's good, man. Hey, isn't it like your birthday coming up next week? How old are you again? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to get me with that trick question. I, I watch your videos. Biological age versus chronological age. Uh-uh. Not playing this one. All right, all right. You are clearly too well informed to fall for my silly tricks. But, whoa, 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 whoa. But, but what? Well, I was just gonna ask if you knew your infla age. I infla age? Now there's infla, w what's infla age? What the hell is that? <laughs> Guys, what is up? Welcome back to a Another week of how to help. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in a odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. This week, we are diving into one of the biggest liabilities when it comes to longevity, and that is low dose chronic inflammation. Ah! Ah! This type of inflammation is so, 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 so prevalent across the Western world. So prevalent, in fact, it even gets this super cool nickname to describe what it does. Infla aging. Okay, maybe, maybe that's not super cool. Simply put, infla aging refers to the chronic low dose inflammation that characterizes aging. Hmm. This is the inflammation that's occurring in the absence of an actual infection and represents a significant risk of morbidity and mortality as we age. Yeah, no, definitely not super cool. I retract that opening statement. So now that we know what infla aging is, let's talk about what infla aging actually is. I think that'd be helpful. Okay, so there is a variety of stimuli that is thought to be a driver of infla aging. This includes pathogens, which are non-self, endogenous cells and debris, which is self. Begin laser ignition sequence. As well as nutrients and our gut microbiota. Or quasi-self. I personally think quasi-self is the coolest, but that's just me. And at a high level, these stimuli are recognized by receptors of the innate immune system, triggering the biological firestorm, which is inflammation. Hmm. Now this low dose chronic inflammation is thought to increase as we age. While the native cellular cleanup systems that we have, autophagy and mitophagy, which we'll talk about later, seem to progressively decline. And this autoreactive autoimmune process fuels the onset and progression of chronic disease. Hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, to name a few. And this fuel on the chronic disease fire is thought to propagate and accelerate aging, both locally and systemically. So what do all the you know smart people in lab coats think is causing all this? Let's explore. Here are some of the potential causes. At a high level, we know that there is some sort of dysregulation going on with the innate immune system, right? That, I think, is something at least I understand by this point in the conversation. Which means if I understand it, you definitely understand it. But what are the underlying drivers of all this? Well, research has pointed to a few potential underlying causes. Let's take a look. We have immune senescence which is essentially your immune system losing its mojo over time. Ask Austin about that. I've lost my mojo! Then we have cellular senescence, which is when our cells stop functioning properly, thus they stop dividing, which you'll see in a little bit is both good and bad. Another potential player here is diet-induced obesity, leading to the accumulation of visceral fat. That is not the good fat mitochondrial dysfunction or the dysfunction of those energy centers in our cells. And finally, the breakdown and increased permeability of our gut wall. So let's take these one by one, how they're playing a role in chronic inflammation. And most importantly, at the end, like we always do go through what you can do to prevent and remediate this from affecting you. First off, 
immunosenescence. Say that five times fast. Immunosenescence, immunosenescence, immunosenescence. I thought I was gonna be able to do it and then I would have had to cut this part, but I can't, so it stays. All right, so immunosenescence is what we've essentially been talking about here. It's the dysfunction of our innate immune system over time, characterized by a persistent inflammatory response. Increases in immunosenescence is not a good thing. It increases our susceptibility to malignancy, autoimmunity, and infections in general, typically decreasing our response to vaccinations and impairing wound healing. Um, all pretty important stuff. And to be honest, there are still a lot of questions out in the open on this one. The data suggests that this becomes more prevalent as you chronologically age. But if you know me and my philosophy, it's all about biological age, baby. Anyhow, immunosenescence is thought to be accelerated by chronic inflammation and upregulate the effects of cellular senescence. Speaking of cellular senescence, what the hell is that? Good question. Cellular senescence is the irreversible arrest or stoppage of our natural cell cycle. Essentially, a senescent cell just stops multiplying, but it doesn't die, it just sits there. And this is thought to be driven by a variety of mechanisms, including telomere shortening, genotoxic stress, and an increase in inflammatory cytokines. Now the cease of this cellular division is thought to be protective in a way. Think about it. It's a way that our body puts on the brakes of passing along a DNA insult that could mean big trouble down the line. But, and again, there's always a but. It's also bad because these senescent cells don't die. They just hang around like a group of derelicts outside a gas station looking for trouble. I, I used to be a derelict outside a gas station. We could tell that story another day. In this senescent state, they secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines, generating low-grade inflammation. Exactly what we don't want. There has been mounting evidence, primarily in animal models, that show that the clearance of these senescent cells attenuates the progression of age-related diseases, such as atherosclerosis and osteoarthritis. And I know right now there is some very interesting research going on that is going after therapeutic techniques to take out senescent cells as we speak. Next, visceral fat. Poor diets are a big problem. You can see here and in the links below why. One of the reasons why diet is relevant here is because of its role in visceral fat accumulation or that fat that builds up and hardens around your organs. You know, that fat that's closely linked to pretty much every disease. Yeah. You see, macrophages, a particular immune cell, correlates directly with the amount of visceral fat you have. The more visceral fat, the more immune activity and the more low-grade systemic inflammation in your body. And in some cases, it has been shown that this low-grade inflammation seems to persist even when that external stimuli has left. So best implement your healthy eating strategy sooner rather than later, right? Next, let's turn up the heat and talk about those internal power stations, those energy factories, our mitochondria. You probably know them or heard of them as the power plants of our cells, taking in different chemical compounds through different complexes and producing energy. Pretty essential for like life and stuff. What you may not have known is these chemical power plants have bacteria origins, as well as their own DNA, bacterial DNA. And over time, for a number of different reasons, our mitochondria can become weak and leaky, opening up the opportunity for this foreign substance to make its way into circulation. And you know what happens when foreign shit gets into circulation. Rally the troops. Through their bacterial ancestry, these molecules contribute to the inflammatory response by interacting with the receptors similar to the ones in the pathogen associated response. I mean, think about it. It wouldn't be cool if chemicals from the local power plant were leaking out into the community and contaminating everything. So why would it be cool if that's happening at a cellular level? Your immune system wants none of it. That's why they're gonna fight against it, causing this chronic low dose inflammation that gets you over time. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Don't worry, there's hope. 
there's hope, always hope. And before we get to that hope, we're gonna talk about the quasi-self. And my favorite topic, the gut wall and our microbes. You know my saying, happy microbes, happy humans. Let's see why. As you may have known, we have trillions of microorganisms that call our intestines, our body really, their home. This collective group is better known as our microbiota, our microbiome, our microbes, our gut buddies, our gut bacteria, little friends, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For a highly entertaining crash course on your microbes and how you interact with them, I suggest you check out this video here. For this conversation, and as it pertains to inflammation, the type of bacteria, as well as the wall they sit upon, play significant roles. At a high level, these bacteria sit atop a mucus layer on our gut wall. The thicker the mucus, the happier the microbes and the host, aka you. But if the mucus layer shrinks, many times due to poor diet and lifestyle choices, these bacteria come into direct contact with the epithelial cells that make up our gut wall. This triggers an immune response, and if persistent, the separation of these epithelial cells, increasing the permeability of our gut wall, allowing more and more to filter through into circulation and causing a whirlwind of negative downstream effects. One being the continuous activation of our innate immune system. Bam! Infla aging. All right, it is finally time for everybody's favorite segment. What can you do? And it's actually pretty funny because when you look back at all the what can you do sections of my videos, I'd say like 80% of the time, it comes down to the same main core four, five, six interventions. And it's not because I'm lazy. Trust me. Well, that's exactly what a lazy person would say. But just trust me on this one. It's because this shit, these interventions, which are mostly lifestyle interventions, fix so much of our health woes. So here we go, and nothing fancy here. First off, daily movement, and I'll tell you why. Exercise helps keep your mitochondria healthy, stimulating the creation of more mitochondria as well as its cleanup mechanisms, mitophagy, where the old, weak, leaky mitochondria get eaten and recycled. That's a good thing. All this helps mitigate that leaky mitochondria issue. Exercise has also shown to promote healthy communities of microbes in our gut. Oh, and it builds muscle and reduces visceral fat. So do it, at least a few times a week. Next, food. Everyone loves food. We're programmed to love food. But a lot of times that program gets hijacked by our, you know what, just watch this video, okay? That will tell you about that. But food, here's the deal. Everyone's a little different when it comes to their nutritional needs and their specific food sensitivities. That's just the world we live in. But one thing is clear when it comes to food. Highly processed foods, high in fat, high in sugar, are good for 0% of the population. Not Zilch. Nada. I can't think of any more zero words at the moment but no one. They are filled with highly inflammatory, fat-promoting compounds, which promote harmful communities of microbes to congregate in our gut, destroying and breaking down our oh-so-sacred gut wall and setting us up for a world of chronic hurt. So eat real food, okay? Next, we spoke about eating. Now let's talk about not eating, or at least not eating for a period of time. Fasting. This is one of the best tools that we have at our disposal to fight inflammation. And I will tell you why. Fasting promotes our cellular recycling and cleanup program, autophagy, as well as that mitochondrial cleanup program we talked about before, mitophagy. It moves the needle on so many metabolic markers in a positive direction. It would take multiple videos to even go into half of it. Oh, they're in the description below. Yeah. I'll check them out. Lastly, sleep. And I'm gonna take the Nike approach on this one. Just do it, trust me. There's no beating around the bush here. Aging is complex. There are a lot of different mechanisms at play and probably a ton of things we haven't even thought about exploring as a species at this point. 
as technology continues to grow, as the field continues to grow, we're gonna learn so, so, so much more on this. This is just the tip of the iceberg. All that being said, most experts agree that it's a complex process that results from a combination of environmental, genetic, and epigenetic factors. The best way to slow it down is to take care of yourself, learn and understand the mechanisms on which it acts upon and the proper interventions you have at your disposal. Like I said, this is one area that will continue to evolve with science and new insights. And I personally, can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. So stick around and let's see how we can stay as biologically young as possible.